Hey everybody, welcome to Q&A video number 34. Make sure to keep asking questions, it doesn't matter about like me about anything. Just know that I don't respond to review requests or let's play requests in these videos, but I will respond to them in the comments. Also, please bear with me, I'm having allergy problems. And so my brain's a little bit addled right now. But um, there also seems to be a little confusion about where you can give me questions. I have a section on my forum where you can post them. But you can also PM them to me or just post them in the comments sections of these Q&A videos. Simple enough, right? Anyway, let's start out with a question from Sirius Hedgehog Co. What do you think of that guy with the glasses? If you don't know what that is, it is a website where uh, people post videos, mostly of uh, film reviews that are humorous. Uh, they're just blowing things out of proportion, being absurd just to be funny. And usually it is pretty good stuff. Uh, they have their own little characters there. I mean, like, the biggest one, obviously, is Nostalgia Critic, because uh, Doug Walker is actually the one who hosts that site. But, um, there's a lot of people who post on there. Uh, Spoony one posted on there for a while until he left Channel Awesome. Um, Linkar is on there. Um, Brad Jones, a.k.a. The Cinema Snob, is on there. So, there's a lot of people on there who do, uh, videos. Mostly, like I said, of film. But... It's pretty good stuff, actually, and I haven't been able to keep up with it lately, but for the most part, whenever I have watched stuff on there, it's been pretty good. Next one is from Dosta. Do you think that overall, older games are better than newer ones? Let's say in terms of story, atmosphere, difficulty, gameplay, and complexity. And if so, do you think there's a certain year or some specific games that really represent the downfall of gaming? That is, if you even think that's the case. Uh, there isn't really a downfall of gaming, it's just we're going through a slump right now. Uh, the thing is, over time, things have changed. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's not necessarily a good thing either. Uh, for one thing, budgets have gotten bigger, that allows them to do more things, like uh, improve upon the graphics. That's a given, obviously. But um, adding in atmosphere, getting uh, the proper sound people right in there, the uh, good voice actors, stuff like that. Getting uh, people out able to write more into a story. That that all is possible thanks to these larger budgets. But the problem is you get a lot of uh, studios that end up having to focus entirely on spectacle rather than actually focusing on gameplay or storyline or complexity. They want to appeal to the lowest common denominator because, well, they're the people who are going to be buying the game. It's that simple. That's why you have games like Call of Duty being so successful. They're marketed to pretty much everybody. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, Call of Duty's fun, for the most part. I mean, it has its problems, don't get me wrong. But it's still a pretty fun series, as, as long as you uh, can just suspend your disbelief and everything. And just understand what it is. But, yes, games have gotten a lot easier. Their stories have gotten much more lacking, except for in a few cases, like uh, role-playing games, for instance they tend to be a little bit heavier emphasis on storyline, so those have gotten a little bit better, actually, uh, in some ways, in other ways, not so much. Like, storytelling has generally improved since the 90s and 80s, so you've got better storytelling now, but you just don't have as good stories, which is kind of awkward. Complexity is just, it's tanked, which I can understand why, but still, it's pretty annoying. Um, but gameplay is no longer the emphasis, and that's really what bothers us most about games these days. Uh, they, they just don't care. And so, ultimately, that's why older games generally are better than newer ones. It's not always the case. I mean, there are plenty of really bad games from the 80s and 90s. But, um, still, yes, in general, older games are usually more enjoyable, I should say, than newer ones. Not necessarily they're better, they're just more enjoyable. Because, I mean, they might be on the same level as something else or something like that. Anyway, next one is from GamerPart555, and I guarantee you I'm going to get flamed for this. What do you think of JRPGs? First thing, I don't think they're role-playing games, because you're not really doing any role-playing in it. You're just kind of the puppeteer. That's it's still a really bad um, metaphor because it implies you're actually in control. You're not really in control of much. Uh, a JRPG is really closer to an adventure game than anything else. It just has a stat system and combat applied to it. That's why it's called a JRPG. And we really need a better name for that genre because not all JRPGs are Japanese. And they're certainly not role-playing games. So, eh, it's it's a mess. 
the problem I have with JRPGs in general is that they're really, really boring. In the gameplay department, mostly. Uh, they're very tedious. They have that menu-driven combat that doesn't really get very involving. That's not necessarily a bad thing, don't get me wrong. But it's generally not very exciting. And usually you'll have tons of cutscenes and tons of storytelling. And that's not necessarily a bad thing either. The problem is, the stories tend to be all kind of the same. Have the same tropes. They have all the same kind of annoyances that go with them. And the gameplay is just so drawn out over these sometimes 60, 70, 80 hour games. Uh, just because the gameplay is so padded with uh, tedium, where you have to just grind constantly just so you can get past this boss. I hate that. And so the gameplay is really what brings these things down. Some of them are really good, though. And they transcend their problems, like Chrono Trigger, for instance, was really, really good. Um, Tales of Fantasia, the original one, was just really, really good. Um, the only other two I've been able to really somewhat get into were Tales of Symphonia and Tales of Vesperia. Uh, the problem with a lot of JRPGs is they're also uh, PlayStation exclusives, and I just don't do PlayStation. It hurts my hands to use that controller. So I don't really bother with that. And so I can't really comment on a lot of those. But still, I don't really like the genre. And it the problem is it's really stagnant right now because they haven't changed much at all since the 80s apart from graphics and that's really the problem they have focused way too much on graphics and making their spectacle this this enormous thing i mean look at final fantasy for instance they have gotten continuously worse over time and yet they are just getting better and better in the graphics department so it's just a, a weird thing where they they just need to do something to fix this genre and they're just not doing it, and I don't know why. It's kind of depressing, but yeah. Next one is from Omega Wolf Studios 8. How do you feel about gamers completely overblowing Valve's reputation and act like they're God incarnate? Uh, they can get pretty annoying, to be honest with you. I, mean, I don't really have any problems with people liking Valve. I like Valve. Um, th not all their games are amazing or anything, but th they're a pretty solid developer, and they they do a lot of good stuff with Steam and just in general have good ideas, but yeah, lighten up people, they're, they're not God incarnate, nor is Blizzard, I mean, Blizzard's far worse, because at least Valve, you know, produces good games, so, yeah. Next one is from Da-Da-Dun, or Da-Da-Dan, or however, however you pronounce it, I don't know how you pronounce it. What do you think about those big YouTubers who only do Call of Duty commentaries and always beg for people to thumbs up the videos as well as favorite? Um... Uh, I don't really watch them. There are a handful of people like that that I watch, and it's mostly because their personality is what keeps me coming back to them. I find them amusing, or they uh, have a good sense of humor, or something like that. That, Or they have good advice, or they just talk about things that aren't related to Call of Duty, even though that's what's in the background. That That's the kind of stuff I usually watch uh, with these people who do, do mostly Call of Duty commentaries. Uh, I don't really watch the ones who sit there and be like, okay, so I'm playing this game, and I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Um, but, so, it, it's just stuff like that doesn't really appeal to me, so I don't really care. Uh, I do find them amusing, though, when they sit there like, make sure to thumbs up and favorite. It's like, okay, whatever, dude. I'm not going to favorite things unless I actually like them. So, yep. Anyway, that was Q&A 34. Uh, make sure to keep asking questions, and I will catch you guys in later videos.